What's happening and welcome to another episode of Badass Builds where today we're taking a look at Trailmater. Yes sir. Take us through the Trailmater here man. What do we got? Um, This is an 82 Chevy pickup one ton. Originally built for a buddy of mine to be a rock crawler. He had it for a few years. We did a bunch of the work. We dove nosed the front. We didn't do any of this work. We just dove nosed it and it was just strictly rock crawling. That's where all the dents and smashes and bangs came from. Just crawling the rocks. Just here crawling the rocks. I, I haven't dented it since it's been a wreck. <laughs> this is all tubed, right? Yes. Well, just right out here, which that's what makes the truck even funnier, is um, everything about it when it started was built out of used parts or parts from old builds. Okay. So. When I bought the shop and really started building this thing, I was building it out of the used parts section. That's where all the winches came from. That's where all that, anyway. This is left over from a buggy that was built at the old shop, and this is uh, chrome molly tubing. Okay. This so is strong. some of the most expensive yeah. tubing that you can put on a rig. Yeah. And it's on here, and then it ties into um, an old Smitty built raw cage for a CJ7. So wait a minute. <laughs> so it's a Chevy K30 truck, which was a a one ton truck. One ton a truck. A serious yeah. one ton truck yes. that you shortened to make it a rock crawler. Yes. And you put some chrome molly tubing around it, tied it into a Smitty built Jeep roll bar. Well, so just this part of the roll bar right here is an old roll bar extension for a CJ7 that bar right there worked which way back in the day when we first built it the door still worked we cut the wing window out of the door and it shut around the roll bar and it still functioned as a door until this happened oops but yeah but this bar right here is a factory cj7 roll bar and that's what ties into the frame and the hooks tied to that's the basis of my entire roll cage is a factory CJ7 roll bar. So it's a factory CJ7 roll bar that yeah. ties into the tubes that you got on there, that ties yeah. into the frame. That ties in, that ties in, that ties in. Yeah, and you do some recoveries here in Moab. Yes. And, it, and we're not talking about just the, the stock trails. We're talking about anywhere and everywhere people go and get stuck, you, you go and get them, right? It's, it's been on every trail in Moab. Uh, I regret taking it on rear steer. It, it didn't turn out really great for the truck. The doors didn't fit for a while. But, um, but yeah, it's been on it because there was a welding job. Like it wasn't necessarily the, the, the front axle broke on the vehicle and it had to be welded in place to be, even be moved off the trail or to wow. get off the trail. So we had to go in there and get it. And so that happened. And I, I like I said, I tweaked some things, but she survived and she made it out. And you do these recoveries all the time and 24 seven, right? Pretty much. I'm basically on call 24 seven. The only time that I kind of shy away from going out at night is when I have my daughter. She's five years old and I can't really go out and, at midnight. It's understandable. Yeah. So. yeah. so take us through the back here because th this is the business side of things, right? Yeah. I guess this is the workspace. What, what all do you have going on up here? So I've got a 17.5, 17,500 pound Smitty built winch uh, buried underneath there. I've got a mile marker 9,500 above that just for auxiliary. It'll raise and lower the pole. It's a backup just in case. Then I've got a Warren 8000 out one side and a Ramsey 9500 out the other side. They used to be identical, but I broke one of the Ramseys. And then I've got a 10,000 pound Smitty built under the back bumper for additional pulling reasons. If I need to pick a rig up and pull it up an obstacle, I have both options to pull up and pull forward. So I can take these off and flip it up if necessary. So okay. with my trailer, um the four seat razors are so long that when i go through a dip i'll put this really close to the windshield so if i need to i can loosen these up and i can pivot this pole straight up i can actually fold it up against the rack if i need to but i just usually just stand it straight up so then when i drop down off of stuff i don't put it against windshields or anything gotcha because they're so long yeah and then the winch runs from in there through there and then it's pulling up there 
And then you hook that bad boy wherever you can find a spot. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Everything about the back of the truck, I, I used to drive a winch truck in the oil field. And so that's kind of where the layout came from. Okay. The, the gin pole set up with the chains holding it and then multiple winches and all that stuff. So you had a little bit of experience with this stuff before yeah. you went out building the tow truck. So that's yeah, good. Yeah, and it, just experience of recovering all my buddies over years and stuff like that. And I, I had an idea. It was like, well, you know, this could work. And I slowly started at it, and it just became this. But, like, I was also a pipeline welder for a while. So all my leads are right here for my onboard welder. So it's kind of like everything I've done throughout the years is kind it's of hodgepodge. Yeah, kind of helped later. out how I've how I've set up the truck and how I've built it. And it's, I mean, so how many winches is that? I have six total. Six total. Yeah. Wow. I've got one out each side, three out the back, and one out the front. And what's the heaviest rig that you think that you could get off of this? Uh, I pulled out a loaded propane truck. That's about as heavy as you're gonna have to off the yeah. trail, right? Uh, I, I've been some stuff doing that, but yeah, I actually I used to have a 15,000 pound industrial winch in the middle, and that job I actually bent the the housing in half on it. Wow! So I had to get a new winch. And I heard you pulling through, so it's fully locked all the way around. Yeah, um, we're we're working on changing that right now. It's welded front and rear, so full okay. spools front and rear. Gotcha. And on the slick rock. It's, it's causing a lot of chaos with the truck because of the amount of traction you get from the duels. Yeah. That when you're carrying a rig and you're turning on the slick rock with that amount of traction, it, I'm, I'm breaking center pins, I'm wearing out bushings quick. So we're gonna try a selectable locker in the rear. Okay. And see if that takes some of the stress off of the truck. And basically we're gonna try it and we're gonna keep all these parts in case it doesn't work. Right. We'll see how it does. Now, what rear end is in there? This is a Dana 80 out of a 2001 Dodge Dewey. Okay. The the 14 bolt that was originally in here that everybody praises is a super strong axle. Um, I got sick and tired of breaking. I actually broke uh, a tube clear in half at the spring, uh, wow. the, the leaf spring hanger, just because of the weight and the forces that the rig sees come up or go on the trail. Got new compressors for my airbag so that I can air up each side individually. And so that when I carry a rig, so basically it, it rides okay out to a job. Then when I pick up a rig, I can air my bags up heavier or air my bags up to the weight. But so I have limiting straps and bump stops to keep that under control so I don't tear my bags up. Okay. So I actually flex isn't a concern with this, so it's not about suspension travel, it's about keeping the truck together. Right. So I actually have limiting straps and bump stops in the front just to keep my drive line apart and from tearing stuff up. Gotcha. It's not necessarily for wheeling. Yeah. I do wheel it a lot. Yeah. But it's not that's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to work. Yeah. Well, and it definitely does that. So you've got a welder on board. You've got six winches on here. I carry spare parts. I carry spare metal in case we need to weld something together or we need to patch something together. I've actually, I've cut parts off of the truck to fix a rig. Like if I needed a piece of steel and I didn't have one, I've, I've cut things off to just get it welded together to get them out. Because like I said, it's, it can do anything. But it's always easier to drive the rig out than it is to carry the rig out. So if I bear it and get the, to make it drivable, it's way easier than carrying it. But we do have the option if we need to. I went and got a forerunner off of Spike last week. And we got him most, we got the tie rods fixed and we got him most of the way out with only rear wheel drive. We pulled it most of the way. And then right at the end, he hooked a rock and bent another tie rod. And it was kind of like, end of the day we're done so we just picked it up and carried it the rest yeah. of the way out yeah so you'd rather repair it on there yeah or make it drivable to where you can get it out it's definitely a lot that easier. makes more sense yeah.
Yeah, because I, I guess inherently there's going to be some sort of a risk whenever you start towing these things out of these trails. I mean, yeah. these trails aren't made for trailers no. or any kind of towing or anything like that. Uh, so how does the dynamics of, you know, having a rig back there and going up these really steep inclines or down these, how does that really, how does that work? It's pretty rough. Um, I spend a lot of time on just the back wheels. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, crazy. So, and I actually, I have a trailer for the side by side obviously you didn't just go to the store and pick this up either no this is this is about the funniest trailer story you'll ever hear so i got this in high school from my brother-in-law to haul my dirt bike his dad had it made by some oil field welders to haul a golf cart in like the 80s this poor old trailer has been with me forever i i used to have my welding rig on it uh i've had i've hauled everything with it it's it's super funny it just sits around in the backyard until i go oh hey look i have a trailer let's build something new out of it and this time it was hey let's build a recovery trailer out of it so it had to get wider because the side by sides got bigger so i welded these platforms on out here and then that wasn't quite doing it because now the side by sides have got the portals and the extended swing arms and giant tires so i had to build the drive over fenders and then they're still getting longer, so I had to build a deck out the back, an extension out there. I put the ramps on. I did dual axle tray or dual axles because my my first priority is not having an issue on my rig. So this way, if I have a flat tire, it keeps going because it has two others or three others. Also, it has Hutchison dual bead locks on it, which are insanely expensive rims on a $150 trailer. <laughs> <laughs> this pipe out here, cause like I said, I build everything out of whatever's laying around. Yeah. The wrecker in the trailer. So this is black iron pipe. This is basically the whole poop pipe argument. Okay. This is chrome molly tubing. Oh, that's on the inside is chrome molly yeah, and then so you got poop pipe on the this outside. Is, this is like the cheapest pipe you can buy this is the most expensive pipe you can buy right nice. next to each other. But like I said, it works and I've got this rack up front here because it's almost always the front suspension on the on the side-by-sides that have issues. So this way I can pick it up with the pole when I pull it on the trailer. I pick it up and I set it here with the tires hanging. So this supports it and we strap it all down and head out. Um, I had a couple issues with the tongue breaking. That's why I added the gussets and everything like that. But I mean, with the forces you see, you're you can break something. Yeah, you're you're hoping for everything. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad I actually have an onboard welder just in case. But uh, this trailer behind my tow truck has been up Pritchett, um, Metal Masher, Cliffhanger. Um, it's been through Mickey's hot tub been through it yeah. <laughs> so you're the first <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, 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 it's the nice. joys of living in moab right you know, we have a weird idea let's go try, go try it, it out yeah, yeah sure why yeah not? but <laughs> that's awesome the side by sides are easier to carry out on the trailer than to carry out on the wall because the suspension always fails almost always fails on the front of them so that if you're carrying them out I've never had it personally happen, but I've seen it where someone was pulling a rig out, or a side by side out, and they don't see a rock, and it hooks on the rock and rips a tire off. Oh wow! So just because the suspension's pretty weak and spindly, and this thing's running a, a Chevy big block with a whole lot of torque, so if I don't happen to notice something and I bend something, then that you know. I don't like doing that. Yeah. So I've got my trailer where I can just set the side by side on the trailer, and then the trailer takes all the abuse coming out. Gotcha. Okay, so you got this thing pretty well figured out. It's, it's basically a Swiss Army truck. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, take us to the inside. And see what yeah. we got. With the Jeep theme, this is uh, TJ doors. TJ doors. Okay. TJ doors. Just put the PRP seats in. I have mixed reviews about them. I love the PRP seats, but I don't like the high sides for yeah, jumping in. Yeah, no. I've got my winch controls are all right here in the center. Most of my winches, my front Warren and my two rear Smitty belts are all wireless and have their own remotes. But then I have these three switches for all my auxiliary winches on the sides and stuff. 
and of course my lights and all that fun stuff. And then I've got my waivers. <laughs> Those are a must when you're dragging people out of all the trails. Good old insurance trails. waivers, yeah. like I said. <laughs> and, and that's the funniest part about this is the hardest thing about this truck was getting insurance on it. Oh, I bet. And telling people what I knew. And it's really funny because insurance companies would call me and tell me to go get a rig because it was totaled or it was wrecked or whatever and it's now the insurance's responsibility to take care of it. So they want to hire me to go get it. But they won't insure me to do that. Like wow. insurance companies won't insure this vehicle to be an off-road tow truck, yet they want me to go out and get a vehicle that's stranded somewhere. Wow. So it's it's that really funny catch twenty two. That is funny. But yeah, the the whole I uh, the waivers helped me out with all of that. Yeah. So I you know I've got that, and a lot of people understand that this is a specialized thing. There, yeah, there's a lot of risk, but I'm going to do my absolute best to make to mitigate that. Yeah. But I mean, well, that's where the trust in you and your knowledge of the area, your knowledge of how to do this, and yeah. kind well, of I mean, what knowing what you're doing helps a lot, right there. Yeah, it know? does. But like I said, it, it comes down to that whole thing. I mean, I have scratched a couple of rigs, and I've worked out with them. You know, I've, one time I felt so bad that I I didn't even charge the guy. Wow. And it was a tiny little like I barely scratched his his uh, hood with the winch cable, but I felt horrible for it, so I wouldn't charge him for the recovery. Wow. Just cause, but I mean that's. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's, I mean it's good I business. I still gotta though. sleep at night, you know. Yeah, that's good business. Yeah. <laughs> now you said it's got a Chevy Big Block in it. Yes, sir. What size? Uh, 454. 454. Anything special done to it? Um. Well, actually, it just got a new motor because the motor that it's had in it forever, um, has smoked like crazy since the very beginning, and so I felt it was time to put a good motor in it. And so we upgraded the, it had fuel injection before, we decided to put a new um, throttle body carburetor on it, or a injected carburetor basically on there. And then did headers, um, did an intake, we did a little bit of stuff to it. I probably shouldn't have, it's a little too much motor for the truck. I mean, it, yeah, it definitely has way more horse than it's ever had before, but the torque's more what I'm looking for. That's why it's the big block. I, I almost, when I took the rear axle out of the dually, put in this, it was a Cummins. And I had thought about doing that, but the Cummins are kind of noisy and loud. And when you're trying to carry somebody out, you're having a conversation with them and talking to them and explaining what you want to do. And the more noise that you can drop out of that equation, the calmer you can keep somebody when you're not yelling at them to be like, turn driver, no the other driver. Yeah. And that's actually why I've gone to headsets. So I actually have Bluetooth headsets so I can talk to the person that I'm towing out. So that way y'all can communicate. Yeah, so we can, so we can, um, basically so I can reassure them with a calm voice that, hey, everything that's going on is fine. Yes, my front tires are going to pick. Yes, this is going to happen. Yes, that. Don't worry. And keeping calm in the situation, because like I said, carrying a rig off of Poison Spider and Moab Rim, I mean, that has a lot of danger in it. Yeah. I mean, running the trail in general anyway, just running the trail is scary. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. let alone carrying your rig out. So, um, And like I said, a lot of times when you're carrying a rig out, they... Up until recently, they've outweighed me, you know, so I definitely want somebody in there riding the brakes and keeping everything under control. And so if, if we can't stay calm and, and good, a lot of times I, I'll ask the people if they feel comfortable going out and getting towed out. And if they don't, I'll take one of my mechanics with me. So that way he can do Yeah, because yeah. he's done it plenty of times with me, so he understands what we're after and everything, so we keep it. Makes sense. I, I didn't get the, the headsets until probably six months ago, and I've been doing this about for almost four years. Yeah. And so that was a total game changer, because it was like trying it out and everything. I was like, oh, why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> yeah, no kidding, I bet. It's interesting that you went with a big block Chevy and long tube headers to be quieter than the Cummins. <laughs> well, <laughs> that did kind of backfire. Yeah. <laughs>
obviously, you know, they don't necessarily want to meet you out on the trail. No, no, nobody wants to see me coming. <laughs> yeah. It's usually a bad vacation when I show up. Yeah, but they can stop by here at the shop, and you got uh, you got parts. Yeah, we we have uh, parts, and uh, we we're a repair shop. Um, Moab Motorsports. We do uh, we do Jeep repairs. We do recoveries. We do all sorts of things. Um, we will do full builds. I'm kind of back and out of that a little bit just because the hassle that comes with it. Because um, when busy season hits, then we're, we're pretty slammed. So, but I mean, yeah, we we try to stock as many parts as we can. Um, the Jeeps are, you know, the bread and butter around here because it is the Jeep capital of the world. So, um, but. We're trying to get more into the Toyotas and have some more Toyota parts and keep them guys going. Um, but we do we try to do about everything we can to keep keep the parts in here, keep everybody running and welded back together. We've got a full fab shop. Um, we have uh, a lathe, a full CNC plasma table, press brakes. We've got all sorts of fun tools. So stop by uh, Moab Motorsports, yeah. 1805 on 191, right? Yep. And it's just right before you get to the uh, to the city of Moab. Yeah, it's just south of town. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for taking us through the ride. I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate and uh, maybe we can see this thing in action at some point.